Here are six important things that you should do during your home inspection that your home inspector will refuse to do. I'm Dan Portillo and let's get right into it. Number one, do your cars go up and down the driveway without issue? You'd be surprised how many times I've seen cars pull into a driveway that's got too much of a slope or an angle where it prevents the car from going up and down the driveway without scraping as it pulls in. I've also seen driveways so narrow that you actually have to fold the side view mirrors in in order to be able to squeeze through. So be sure to drive all the cars you have that you need to pull into that driveway so you can check to see if there's any issues with your cars and the driveway. Number two, do your cars actually fit in the garage? Drive your cars into the garage. If it's not available, ask the agent to be able to see if they can clear out the space so you can pull in any of your cars to double check that your car fits with length, width, and height and actually close the garage door. It's important you double check to make sure that everything fits the way it's supposed to and the door opens and closes as normal. Number three, are there any noise issues? You'll be surprised how many things you can hear just by sitting inside the home, opening up some windows and sitting there for a while and just listening. I've been into many beautiful homes in desirable neighborhoods where there's a neighbors that actually have chicken coops directly next door. So sit in the living room, sit in the kitchen, wherever you have to be, open up the windows and just sit there and listen to see what you hear. Especially if you're in a condo or townhouse and you have adjoining walls, double check to see what's on the opposite side of those bedroom walls where you plan to sleep. Is there a common area laundry? Is there an elevator shaft or a trash chute? Any of those things that might be a noise factor that you might not be aware of is important to know during that investigation period. Number four, is there overnight parking allowed? There's many cities that don't allow overnight parking. So double check if there's overnight parking allowed. If there's not, is there an annual permit fee or is there a daily permit fee that you can get as needed? And number five, if schools are important to you, you wanna call the school or the district and verify the exact address with the school district to make sure that that address is located within the boundaries. Number six, check your cell coverage. You'd be surprised how many homes I've walked into where there's little to no cell reception. Now, I will add this, that I would never recommend passing on a home just because you have poor cell coverage, but it is important to know. At least you'll know if there's a problem with reception that it's something that you might have to replace a cell carrier in the future if it really becomes bothersome. So I hope that helps and I'll see you on the next one.